Of the 43% that lose their status, about 30% stay somewhere between the 75th and the 90th percentile, and then about 13% fall below the 75th percentile. Now, on its face, it may not seem like a big deal. And um, it's true that the drop in achievement is not a dramatic drop in achievement. But the consequences in the, of the drop may be higher than people think. Uh, for example, in many school systems, if you drop below the 95th percentile, you're no longer eligible for gifted programming. In uh, some school systems, if you drop below, say, a 90th percentile performance, you're no longer eligible for honors programming. And I've got two college-age daughters, so the thing that was most relevant to me at this point is, how much financial aid could you lose if you drop? And this is just one example that we posted in a blog. Um, I'm from the West Coast, so forgive the example. Um, if one wanted to go to Montana State University, and I don't know why you'd want to do that. Because it's in a really nice place, Bozeman. Yeah. Bozeman's cool. If you score at the 97th percentile on the SAT, so in other words, you're at the top of our high flyers, you'll automatically get $60,000 over four years in need-based aid. That's about 60% of the cost of attendance at the university. If you fall to the 89th percentile, which would have been just below our threshold, you lose $30,000 of that money, uh, $7,500 a year. If you fall to the 75th percentile, which would be just below where the average group ended up that were descenders, that aid goes down to $10,000. So in other words, you lose about 12500 a year in aid. So if you're looking at the group of descenders, we're looking at a group here that, had they been taking the SAT and attending Montana State, um, would have been eligible for between thirty dollars to $60,000 worth of aid and lost substantial amounts of that aid due to the fact that they descended. So there are consequences to this. And the consequences of small drops in achievement may be, may be larger 